I'm going to explain all of the core Linux commands that you need to be familiar with, starting with touch, which creates a file. Let's create a file called file3.txt. Next, we have ls, which lists the directory contents. We can see file3.txt in the output of this command. If we want more details, we can use ls with the l option. This will show information such as the file permissions, the owner and group, the creation or modification date, and the file name. To list hidden files, we can use the A option. This shows the current directory and the parent directory. The current directory is represented with the dot, and the parent directory is represented with the dot dot. We can print the current working directory using PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory. This shows the current directory that we're in. Let's create a new directory using mkdir, which stands for Make Directory. Let's call this new directory new underscore directory. We use ls to view the new directory. You can also create nested directories using mkdir with the p flag. Let's create a nested directory under second new directory, second new directory slash nested. Now if we use ls, we can see that second new directory is present. We can use the cd command to change directory. Let's change into second new directory. Now let's use ls to view the nested directory inside second new directory. We can use cd followed by dot dot to navigate back to the parent directory. We can use ls to view the contents of the parent directory and pwd to print the working directory, which is slash home slash lab x slash project. To remove a file, we use the rm command followed by the file name, in this case file2.txt. We use ls to confirm that it is in fact removed. To recursively delete a directory and all nested subdirectories and its contents, we can use rm with the r option, which stands for recursive, followed by the directory name, in this case second new directory, which contains a nested directory called nested. After executing this command, we use ls and see that second new directory and its subdirectories have been removed. We can use the cp command to copy files or directories. Let's copy file.txt into file underscore copy.txt and use ls to view it. We can see file underscore copy.txt exists. We can also copy a directory with the r option followed by new directory and we'll copy this into a directory called newer directory. I had a typo, it should be new directory instead of new director. Now we use ls, and we see that newer directory is a copy of new directory. We can use mv to move or rename files. Let's rename file.txt to file4.txt using mv file.txt file4.txt. We use ls to view the changes, and we note that file.txt has successfully been renamed to file4.txt. Let's move file4.txt into newer directory by using mv file4.txt newer directory. Let's ls and notice that file4.txt is gone. Let's cd into newer directory and ls to confirm that file4.txt is present inside newer directory. Now let's cd back by providing the parent directory notation and use pwd to print the working directory. Let's use echo with redirection. We use the echo command followed by the content to append. Then we use the redirection operator followed by the file name, in this case file3.txt. Now let's use the cat command to display the content of a file, in this case file3.txt. We can see that the line of text that we appended using echo with redirection has been successfully appended to file3.txt. Let's use ls to list the contents of the directory. Let's use echo with redirection to populate filecopy.txt. Echo second line of text and redirect into file underscore copy.txt. Now let's cat filecopy.txt. The second line of text has been appended to the filecopy.txt file. Now let's combine the contents of file3.txt and filecopy.txt into a new file called combine.txt. We use the cat command followed by the name of the first file, file3.txt, followed by the name of the second file, filecopy.txt, followed by the name of the combined file, combined.txt. Now let's cat the contents of combined.txt. Notice how both lines of text are present in combined.txt. This first line is concatenating or combining these two text files into this resulting combined.txt file. The second cat command is displaying the contents of the combined.txt file. Next, let's look into grep, which is a powerful search utility. We can search text in files. Since we know the word text is present in combine.txt, let's grep for the word text in combine.txt. It highlights the matching text in the output for visibility. Let's count the number of matches by passing the C option to grep and running a similar command. Notice how two is returned since there are two text matches. 
Before showing the chmod command, which allows us to change file permissions, let's use ls with the l option to view the current file permissions. Notice how the permissions for the owner is set to read, write, and no execute. For the group, it is set to read and write and no execute. And for others, it is set to read, no write, and no execute. This is the existing set of permissions for the file called combined.txt. To make the permissions of the combined.txt file as permissive as possible for owner, group, and others, we will use chmod, which changes the file permissions, followed by 777, where each 7 represents read, write, execute for the owner, group, and other. The 7 is the most permissive because read accounts for 4, write accounts for 2, and execute accounts for 1. So combining read, write, and execute, you get 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7. This means that the owner of the file, members of the group, and all other users outside of the owner or group members have full permissions to read, write, and execute for the file combined.txt. Now we pass it the file name combined.txt. Using ls with the l option, we can see that combined.txt now has full read, write, execute permissions for all for the owner, group, and all other users.